Hello viewers, I'm Simon Christie and I'm Danny Sparks Cousins and welcome back to another big episode of your 4x4 as we trek southwest across the Kimberley. Danny, beautiful morning this morning. Oh lovely, you should have seen the sunrise, it was awesome. Alright and what have you got planned for us today Danny? Well we've got an early start, we're heading out with uh, local Aboriginal guide Brian Lee. He's going to take us on a tag along four wheel drive tour so we get to do a bit of driving and we'll also do some spear fishing, some mud crabbing and hopefully catch something for our lunch. Maybe even for our dinner if we get enough. Could be. And then this afternoon we can go for another drive and maybe check out One Arm Point. Sounds exciting, Danny. Now viewers, Danny and his wife Sally have put together an amazing trek for us across these 20 episodes. And that's all about the planning that you've got to put into it. And Danny, probably about two years of planning has gone into this trip. That's right, Simon. About two years to get it all organised, to make sure we had all the sponsors organised. We've got 25, 27 people at sometimes, 10, 11 vehicles. There's a bit to get organised. All right, viewers, you've got to plan these trips, you've got to be organised, and we've got another killer episode for you. Let's get stuck into it. Your 4x4 is partnered by the Holden Colorado 7, Light Force Performance Lighting, Brown Davis Automotive, Kmar 4 wheel drive accessories, ARB 4x4 accessories, Piranha Off-Road Products, Berrima Diesel, Hema Maps and Cooper Tyres. It was just amazing over probably about an hour, hour and a half, well before the sun came up. You just had the glow and the changes were just absolutely amazing. There were only a handful of us down here. Obviously the, the camera guys came down. I think they were getting dizzy. Which place do I shoot next? It was the waves are crashing with the rocks behind, the rocks to the side, the clouds. It was just fantastic. The colours just changed and changed and changed. I'm Andrew from DP Chip. And I'm Matt Frost from ARB. When I came here six years ago, I, I was thinking at the time how much I'd love to bring my son back and explore the areas. Now I just want to bring the whole family back. I mean, it yeah. really is a wonderful part of Australia. Hi, I'm Jeff Newey from Cooper Tyres. And I'm Sean O'Donnell from Light Force, coming to you from the northern tip of the Dampier Peninsula at a place called Coochaman, which is also known as Cape Levick. And what a treat we've had in store today. We've been out with the local bargee man, Brian Lee, and he's taken us out and shown us the sights. And I have to say, I felt today was a really uplifting experience, Jeff. It was, getting into the sand and a bit of beach driving. It was a bit of fun. It was great to air down the tyres, we brought the tyres down to 15 psi so they were really bagged out and the beach sand here is that really soft billowy sand that just yeah. sort of blows across the surface. Hi, I'm David from Kmart 4-Wheel Drive. 
and I'm Natasha from Hima Maps. Last night when we arrived here, we saw a couple of smaller cars being dragged off beaches with higher tyre pressures. So once again, tyre pressures are an important part of keeping that footprint nice and wide. G'day guys, Cameron Brown from Brown Davis Automotive. Good morning, Alan Johnson here from Piranha Off-Road Products. We are in this massive big sand flat. Quite tricky to drive in, so you really want to stay in the tracks of the guy ahead of you. Sort of not enough forward momentum and you know you're easily stuck yes, here. You stop, that's it. I always think momentum is the key in these conditions, just to keep pushing through and a bit of speed, a bit of pace helps you get over the dunes and sees you over the corrugated ruts that, that do exist up there. Coming along the beach there, and what do we find? A Prado. Yes, just stuck there. They'd actually been caught bogged and tried to recover it. Unfortunately, the waves had come in quicker than they were able to get it out of there. And yeah, the damage was quite mm. in intense on the vehicle, wasn't it? This just shows how nature does have that power. Mm. And you have to be always thinking what you're doing, yeah. especially when you're driving on the beach, especially when you're driving with your family. You yeah. have to really think before you're entering Correct. the beach. Yep, mm. and watch where your lines are and all that sort of thing. But what was interesting to see was actually how the bull bar, which was an aluminium style of bar, where we found it, the strap was actually wrapped around the bull bar and hence the bull bar was pulled forward. How they recovered we don't know but it just goes to show that having those snatch and straps fixed to a proper recovery point is really important when you're out here yeah. forward driving and, and having correct recovery gear. It's a shame that it's still out there but they'll eventually get that in and clean up that area of the beach. He sat you down, we all sat around cross-legged and he took us through the story of the development here and how the place came to be and really gave us an insight into the civilization and the way of life that yeah. they had here and it was really a very positive experience. Well, the, back at the Red Tandil, so his name was Harry Hunter um, and he was my great-grandfather. He was English and he came out in about 1860. The authorities then went there to get advice from him. Ryan knows a lot about the country, he's been here for a long time, told us about the history of the place, told us some of the stories from his people. One of the most uplifting experiences I think I've had. Yeah, no, it was good and good to hear the family history and uh, as you say, how it all came about. I was particularly excited by the fact that this is a commercial enterprise. Yeah, it so is. Its development has been funded through trading and through the tourism activity that it's generated here, to the point now where it's returning something like $100,000 of dividend back into the community. We're out here on another good Kimberley adventure, a continuation of our Kimberley adventure. Do you want better performance from your modern diesel 4x4? Then a DP chip is your answer for safe, reliable and enduring power gains. Backed by Australia's premier diesel workshop, a DP chip offers increased power and torque output, better drivability and can even improve economy. With 24-7 customer support, a 60-day money-back guarantee, a six-year warranty, plus a matched new vehicle engine and driveline warranty, there is no other choice for safe, reliable and enduring diesel performance gains. Check dpchip.com for full details. Warning, beware of imitation lights. Only light force, performance lighting guarantees. Australian made, no leaking or melting, quality output and three year warranty. Unlike their imitators, light force lights feature peerless construction, leak proof seals, impact proof lenses and filters, vibration and fracture resistant mounts and housings, and stainless steel fittings. Outshining and outlasting their impersonators in every way. Often imitated, never replicated. Visit lightforce.com for the full range of authentic light force lights. ARB, Australia's largest manufacturer and distributor of 4x4 accessories, has everything you need for your next off-road adventure. From bull bars and suspension to recovery gear and lights, we've got four-wheel drives of all shapes and sizes covered. Whether you're heading off the bitumen for a weekend getaway or preparing for that epic round Australia trip, enjoy a safer, more comfortable journey with ARB. To order a copy of our free catalogue, visit our website or give us a call. 
Sometimes the front runners lead from behind. And when it comes to protecting your rear, Kmart are world leaders in rear end protection and tow bar combinations. The just released Prado 150 is no exception. With a bar that is designed to follow the car's lines and work with your sensors and factory camera. For the best in rear end protection, trust Kmart. It's a statement, not just an accessory, but the toughest of 4x4 trips. For more info, go to kmart.com.au. Well, our question this week comes from Steve Mara, who has written, when you fix a flat tire off the bead, is there a trick to seal the bead when you pump it back up? Well, Steve, that's a great question, and Alan Johnson from Piranha Off-Road can answer that for us. Guys, we have a really good question here, and a very important question, it's a safety question too. We have a tire, we've managed to break the bead, now, we've broken the bead probably to do one of a number of things, either get mud out of the bead because it was leaking or possibly fix a puncture. But now the critical part is how do we reseat the bead back onto the tyre safely and efficiently. Now, first of all, let's start at the beginning. This is a brand new tyre and this is a brand new rim, so it's going to go really, really easily, which is good, but for the demonstration purposes, let's run through it. First of all, number one, lubricant, lubricant and even more lubricant. What are we going to use as lubricant? It's dishwashing detergent. That makes an awesomely good lubricant. You normally carry that in a four-wheel drive trip with you and it works really, really well. So what you're going to do is put a bit of goop just around here. The next thing is you've got to put lots of air into this tyre and there's a couple of ways we can do this. So let's show you some of the things you need to know. If you're using this type of an inflator, you've got to be leaning over the tyre like this, holding this on. That's not a safe thing to be doing because if this was to come off the wrong way or too much air went into it, you could actually hurt yourself. So we've got a really, really simple, safe thing to do. This is a lock-on valve cap. Goes onto our compressor here, so it holds the pressure in. We have the valve out of the tyre because we've let it down. There's a couple of ways to do this. You can actually put the valve back in and that holds it, but I'm actually going to leave the valve out because I can get more air into the tyre more quickly to help reseat this bead if I leave the valve out. So here we go, this is all going to happen. Ready, set, guys. Right, step back. That's starting to seat now. Just got a bit on that side to go. That seems to be going okay. Well, here we go. Now. Get our valve. Nicely seated. No major problems. So the safety issues with that are obviously, if this was to jam, you'd need more pressure. Now, if you're out in the bush and you didn't have a powerful enough compressor and you couldn't get this to actually go on, one of the tricks you can use is to actually push down here to try and push the outsides out. If you're still having trouble, the other option you've got is to use a ratchet tie down, put the tie down strap around the outside perimeter and clamp it up and that will also push the bead out aside for you to help it seal. So the reality with this thing, if you do it safely and you do it properly, you shouldn't have any dramas and it is something you will probably have to do at some stage in the bush with modern day tyres. So reseating beads, no major problems if you follow the procedures. For sending in that question, you've won yourself a DP Chip merchandise pack, including a Chippy doll, pen, keyring, cap and stubby holder, as well as an ARB prize pack featuring socks, a toaster and a cooler bag. All Ask an Expert entries go into the series draw for an ARB twin motor compressor, a Kmart $1,000 gift voucher for Osbar or Kmart products, and a 12 volt travel buddy oven for hot food on the go. Plus, all of our lucky viewers are eligible to enter the huge draw for $1,800 worth of Cooper tyres. Check the Your 4x4 website for full details. Hi, I'm Sean O'Donnell from Light Force Australia. We're travelling in this journey with the Mazda BT50. It's been well equipped for the journey and it's, it's really performing very well. The vehicle itself is a five-cylinder diesel engine, uh, 3.2 litre, plenty of power, lots of torque and quite economical as well. You know, we're averaging about 13 and a half litres per 100 kilometres and after a heavily laden vehicle, we're very happy with the range we're getting from it. The vehicle itself is equipped with a long-range fuel tank from Brown Davis. We're carrying 140 litres in the main tank. That's giving us a range of just under a thousand kilometres with a bit of a safety margin. Plus on the back, we've got a Kmart rear bar that's carrying a 20 litres of fuel and 20 litres of water. 
we're finding that very convenient actually we're using that as our main water storage the unit swings away the jerry cans there at all times the water is easily accessible and that that's worked out really well for us on the back of the Kmart bar we've also got an additional spare tire so we're carrying uh, six tires two spares one underneath in the original OEM position and another additional spare uh, which is handy you know we've had an incident yesterday where we've uh, where we had a rim failure and that caused a tire to shred but we're still carrying an additional spare that gives you a lot of confidence when you're you know we're 4,000 kilometers away from home and we can still carry on with our journey because we know we've got we're confident we've got an additional spare tire there you know should the need arise I mean we're pretty happy with the tyres that we're running, we're running Cooper ST Max, they're a very comfortable tyre, we're travelling, we've learned a lot about tyre pressure on this trip, we've learned that we can run lower pressures and that gives us additional suspension travel because the corrugations here and the conditions that you do face in central Australia really mean that your tyres can, can really be the front line and really protect the rest of the vehicle from vibrations and corrugations and undulations that you do face in the roads out these parts. So the vehicle itself is equipped with long range driving lights, they're uh, Genesis 50 watt HID. They're lightweight, they withstand the corrugated conditions very very well, uh, unlike heavy metal and glass lights or a lot of LED lights that people are carrying around these parts, they just don't shake out of alignment, they've stayed rock steady, uh, very very happy with them. Yesterday coming into the campground you know it was difficult seeing conditions, it was just that half light between dusk and, uh, and, and the evening and really the additional punch of the, of the 50 watt HIDs, that probably made the difference of being able to continue with the journey and getting here on time and being able to enjoy this spectacular location, you know, to plan. One of the other pieces of equipment, not so much for the vehicle, but for the camping itself, has been the Oztent RV1. The, the tent itself is compact, it goes up in a flash, it literally is a 30 second tent. It's been really, really comfortable, I haven't had a single issue with it, sleep really, really well in it. I've just found it the perfect tent for these types of conditions where you want to really, uh, we're moving quickly, uh, we're up in the, early in the morning, want to make ground to the next day, and the tent itself is just something else that you don't have to mess around with, just folds up into its bag, up onto the roof rack, ready for the next location. And I found it really, really good. I highly recommend the Oz tent products. The other piece of equipment that we found very useful on the trip has been the HEMA Navigator. We're, we're running that uh, with the waypoints loaded. Danny has supplied us with a file which has got all the route markers shown on there. That means at any point along the journey you can know precisely how far you are from the next checkpoint. The HEMA Navigator itself contains a lot of maps so you're able to flick through various pages and you know if there's a map that's missing the detail that you want you can go down to a, to a finer level or you can go back up for a, more of an overview. I found that system very very useful and uh, have enjoyed using that a lot. One of the things that has been apparent out here is the amount of vehicles that are driving around with one single light or an LED light bar that just hasn't been able to cope with the conditions. You know, when you drive these parts of Australia, you will face steep corrugations, undulations, washouts. The road conditions are quite poor and you need to set your vehicle up to withstand those types of conditions. Light force lights are made of lightweight polycarbonate material they're highly durable, that means that they don't have the mass that pulls themselves apart as is typical with a glass or a metal uh, constructed light. The amount of lights we've seen along the Gibb River Road where there's just been a single light or lights pointing up or lights just basically about to fall off the front of the bull bar, really those lights are not very useful in these conditions because you know you've got to switch them on and you're really going to find that your lights are not going to be in the condition to be able to see you through the journey with safety and security. This week's first entry is this 75 series Land Cruiser. It's plenty of fun and easy to work on. This photo was taken in northern New South Wales. Next is this tidy looking Hilux, out on a regular hunting trip in the New South Wales Riverina region. Now this shorty GQ Patrol sure looks like fun. Big tyres and all the gear make sure the weekend play trips are full of adventure. This 80 series Land Cruiser looks great showing off a bit of flex. The turbo diesel is shown here on Dusty's track just out of Nowra. And our last entry for the week is this very tidy Navara, decked out with plenty of gear and ready to hit the tracks. 
If you've just seen a photo of your rig and you're the first person to email danny at your4x4.com.au, you've won yourself a Light Force stubby holder and tack torch, as well as a Brown Davis tub seal kit. All photos go into the running for a DP chip plug and go pedal chip, a HEMA HN7 GPS navigator, a Piranha DBE 140 dual battery controller, and a Piranha digital dual battery monitor. And don't forget, for your chance to win $1,800 worth of 4x4 rubber, check the Your 4x4 website for details. If you drive a four-wheel drive with or without a dual battery kit, then it's time to upgrade. Modern vehicles and modern battery technologies require smart electronics, and the Piranha Off-Road Products DBE140 dual battery controller has all the smart grunt you will need packed into an affordable and tiny package. Priced at just $170, the Piranha DBE140 is the smart choice in dual battery management. For more information on how you can stay charged, visit piranhaoffroad.com.au. Got a tough 4x4 tourer and enjoy hitting the tracks? Odds are you'll need some serious underguard protection and a heavy duty long range tank. Brown Davis Automotive offer aluminised steel underguard protection plates and long range tanks for most popular makes and models. They're designed and developed right here in Australia and have been tested to the extreme right across this great country. Remember Brown Davis Automotive, it's a trusted and family owned Aussie business and proud manufacturers of high end tanks, underguards and more. Well, this week's entry comes from David Castle, who has written, I love my 4x4 because every new challenge creates a new skill. Thanks for sending in that email. You've won yourself a HEMA Explorer app and a Piranha recovery bag. All entries go in the running for a Brown Davis long range fuel tank, a pair of Lightforce Venom 50 watt HID driving lamps, and an RFI antenna pack, including an antenna, stubby holder, cap, and water bottle. Plus, all fans are eligible for the big Cooper Tires giveaway valued at up to $1,800. Check the Your 4x4 website for full details. We've sort of gone into areas where the normal tourist can't go because it is private land. One of the great things is we got to see bits of this place we couldn't normally see. There's a big sign, no access beyond this point for normal people, but obviously with Brian as our leader, we're able to go into some pretty amazing country. driving up through the back of the dunes. With mangrove swamps, it just, yeah, wow. The mud crabbing experience we've been looking forward to for a yes. fair while now, so it's been on sort of the, the checklist of something we wanted to get to and, and give it a go. The experience was pretty amazing. Today has been an absolutely fantastic day through the estuaries and him talking mm. about his people. Mm. 
show to some local bush tucker, which was good to experience that as well. Yeah. I was the first person who actually got the crab and it was magnificent because it was the blue colors and red and greens and he was just not as a, as a huge size but it was just this big claws and I first time actually I hold it. Big claws or big claws? Claws. 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 Большие лапы были у него, которые меня чуть-чуть сейчас не укусили. <laughs> uh, but if I'm going to be stuck here and I need to film the food now, I know how to do it. <laughs> so I come out here. People talk about spears and these little bits of wire, but a thong is all it takes. And that's traditional Australian thong. Your other thongs won't work as well. Well done. Went in for the spearfish, probably in there for all of 10, maybe 15 minutes, yeah. it was fairly cold with the wind. And going in, I think that would have been swim across 10 meters. Yeah. By the time I got out, it was out to about 25, 30. Yeah. So this whole area, including where we were down in Derby, yeah. tides are an amazing thing and make yeah. it just, I mean, it is to this area, it, it's one of the, I mean, if not one of the biggest tides or top sort of five tides in the entire world. Yeah. I'd hate to have been coming through in a ship back in those days, not being aware or ready for the tides. It was absolutely roaring out there. This afternoon we went to One Arm Point, which is an absolutely stunning part of the world up here. Beautiful turquoise waters. If the road was sealed the whole way down to Broome, this place would be tourists everywhere. If you're coming into the area amongst Broome and Derby and out of the Kimberley, yeah. you're silly not to pop up here for exactly. a few days. Hey, you can get magnums, you can get food, you can drink. There's all sorts of things you can get, but you can't get fuel. So do remember, fuel's very important when you're out here. Well, I'm heading out this afternoon. I'm going to flick a couple of lures around in the surf and see what's out there. Me personally, I'm going to be watching the sunset again because that's just unforgettable sight. Yeah.